The death of my husband affected me so much that uh, I wondered why he was killed. I wanted to know why he was killed and not brought to the court of law to answer for himself. This is Rian Stander, a military intelligence agent during the 80s. He holds a key to the mystery surrounding the attempted coup, who was behind it, and what might have happened on that day in November 1990. I became involved in the Transkei from an intelligence point of view during 1986 when I was employed by Longreach. Which what was Longreach? Longreach was a military intelligence front company, in other words, a project run by Craig Williamson and myself and a few other people. Um, I was tasked to monitor the uh, intelligence activities in the Transkei, which I did. Political activity in the former homeland of the Transkei increased as the struggle against apartheid intensified during the latter half of the 80s. Tension between the Pretoria government and the Transkei rose when General Bantu Olemisa took power in 1988. They were not uh, happy with the language I was speaking at the time because it was not in favour of uh, their party or their government. Military intelligence decided to topple Halemisa by planning a coup against him. Stander was aware of the plot. Was the South African government directly involved in the planning of the coup? Yes, um, that was a direct plan and uh, attempt from military intelligence, number one. Number two, Department of Foreign Affairs were very closely involved. In actual fact, uh, uh, a lot of the operations came right out of Umtata from the embassy that time. Uh, How do you know that? Uh, we were working on, on uh, agents who were feeding information to us all the time and we, in actual fact, some of my people monitored the embassy. One of Rian Stander's close confidants in the Transkei at the time was this man, Colonel Craig Dooley, Horemisa's second in command on the military council. Craig Dooley had the uh, ambition to become the military leader of the Transkei in the place of Horemisa. And military intelligence would have then handled him exactly the same way as what Epacoso was, was controlled in the Siskei. That would have been the answer to the Eastern Cape uh, um, power base, because they would have had in Craig Dooley in the Transkei, Epacoso in the Siskei, and the ANC wouldn't have had any chances in, in the forthcoming government or elections. But Rian Stander was also informed of a plot to kill Holomisa. Who ultimately decided that Holomisa had to be killed? I can't give you the exact name of the person or the persons. They were in actual fact uh, two uh, government, high, highly placed government officials as well as a private business organisation. Uh, but that was done between the two departments I've mentioned, Department of Foreign Affairs, Military Intelligence and, and this group of very concerned private businessmen. Stander warned Halemisa about the assassination plot against him. Ian Stander was uh, one of the people who we communicated with because uh, apparently he was uh, close to a number of these uh, big guns in South Africa. Why did you warn Holomisa? I learned during those years that the ultimate aim wasn't just to work against the ANC or uh, against Holomisa per se, but there was a very strong monetary uh, involvement and a monetary interest by the different bodies concerned. They had companies operating under military intelligence uh, wings uh, building houses, uh, getting large sums of money, and that was all filtered back into their own pockets. Was his information accurate? So far, I think uh, his information was accurate. Eight people would travel from, from Johannesburg, and they would meet up with eight more in Queenstown. In Queenstown, they made contact. Everything went 100% from there. Firearms was an issue to them. 
uh, without any uh, live rounds. We removed the, the black powder and uh, they were issued with the firearms. All got into this minibus taxi and then en route to Transkei they were arrested after they have revealed to the agents the plot. Um, the plan was in actual fact to locate Olomisa in the um, official residence in Umtata and then to wait until he will appear in um, a public meeting that particular weekend I think and then attack him and shoot him. On the 23rd of November 1990 Colonel Craig Dooley and his men bombed the military garrison in Umtata. But General Holomisa and troops loyal to him were ready for them. The general was warned of the attempted coup. They were ambushed. They were collected from the uh, Air Force Detachment base. They were collected together and they negotiated with Colonel Nzwaiba who arranged a transport and he, he got a, a minibus, he bundled them into a minibus. By the time the minibus uh, left the Air Force detachment, Nzwaiba's men had already been deployed about two or three kilometers outside the Air Force detachment where they were ambushed and killed. By the end of that day, 19 people were dead. Amongst them were the coup leader, Colonel Craig Dooley. He had gunshot wounds in his leg, eye and back. His death was a mystery. When he was captured by Holomisa's men earlier that day, he limped out of the Buerta Sichau building, only slightly injured. He was loaded in the boot of a car and taken away. Apparently my husband went to the camp. He was slightly injured. But what Mbulawe saw was he was told to turn and look this way. He said, I'm go sit down, I'm, I'm going to talk to you and tell you why I'm doing this. He said, I haven't I haven't done anything against the Transkayans. The only one that I'm against is this one, and he also knows this. I don't want to be the leader of the country. So they said, turn and look that way. And that is how he was shot, while he was still pleading. And that was the end of him. What happened to Dooley after he was wounded? He was removed. Uh, I would say for interrogation and detention and treatment and um, I think he has met his fate then on the way uh, to his to the destiny where they wanted to go and and do the interrogation. Do you think he was executed? Uh, yes I believe it was it was an execution. Why do you say that? Uh, it wouldn't have been in the interest that time of, of the uh, persons there to keep him alive. Was Olomisa involved in the, in the execution? I don't think he even knew about it. Craig Dooley had information that some members of the military did not want Craig to reveal. As I say, or as I've said to you, it, this was not planned by Craig by himself. He was together with other members of the military as I have enumerated out to you right away. So I want to take a guess that they wanted to, 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 to silence him. Now the reason why I'm here before this commission is because I feel like my husband should have been taken to the court of law so that he can defend himself. Who killed him and why he killed him? What was so secretive? Because it was obvious that he was going to disclose this secret. It was now the time for him to say what was the problem with him and his friend, General Holomisa.